Okay, in this problem we're asked to calculate the second order Taylor polynomial of f of x, y, z around the point 1, 0, 0. And also to calculate the third order Taylor polynomial of f of x, y, z around the point 1, 0, 0. And we're given that our function f of x, y, z is equal to x cubed y plus e, z, e to the power of z squared. Okay, so for our second order Taylor polynomial. We know that it, the second order Taylor polynomial is the sum from r equals 0 to 2 of 1 over r factorial times the rth total derivative of f at the point 1, 0, 0 with respect to x minus 1 because we're at the point 1 and y, z since we're at 0, 0. So for this problem, we're going to need the total derivative, the rth total derivative at the point 1, 0, 0. With respect to x minus 1, y, and z. And we know that the formula for this is the sum of all combinations of k1, k2, and k3, such that they sum to r. So we'll say k1 plus k2 plus k3 equals r of r factorial over k1 factorial, k2 factorial, k3 factorial. And multiply that by the mixed partial derivative of f, where x is taken as the derivative k1 times, y k2 times, and z k3 times. And then finally, multiply by x minus 1 raised to the power of k1, y raised to the power of k2, and z raised to the power of k3. Okay, so we're going to need to Take the, use this formula for values of r, where r is equal to from 0 to 2. We know the, that r equals 0 is a special case. It's just the value of f at the point 1, 0, 0. And we can just go ahead and compute that, which is equal to 0 plus e to the 0, which is 1. So our value for r equals 0, we have 1 over 0 factorial, which is 1, times 1. So our first term in the Taylor polynomial is just going to be 1. And then we need to compute the first total derivative. which we know to be equal to just Thank you. 
So we know that the only possible combination where k1, k2, and k3 sum to be r, and k1, k2, and k3 are uh, natural numbers, are when k1 is equal to 1, or k2 is equal to 1, or k3 is equal to 1. Because after we've chosen one of those, um, the others have to be 0. So in that respect, we have r factorial, which is 1 factorial, over 1 factorial, regardless of which term we're working on. So I only wrote it for the first one. And then we're taking that times the partial derivative of f with respect to x times x minus 1 when k1 is equal to 1. And when k2 is equal to 1, we have f sub y times y. And when k3 is equal to 1, we have f sub z times z. So we need to calculate our partial derivatives of f. So we can just write it And also, all of these partial derivatives are evaluated at our point 1, 0, 0. So we can take the gradient of f just to get a nice compact form for our partial derivatives. So a partial derivative of f with respect to x is 3x squared y. Partial derivative with respect to y is just x cubed. And the partial derivative of f with respect to z is 2z times e to the z squared. OK, and we're going to evaluate this at the point 1, 0, 0. So at 1, 0, 0, we get Our partial derivative with respect to x is 0. Our partial derivative with respect to y is 1. And our partial derivative with respect to z is 0. So we can go ahead and plug into this equation. And we know that our first and third terms are going to be 0. So we just have our total derivative at the point 1, 0, 0 is equal to y. So we have. Our total derivative at the point 1, 0, 0 is equal to one, y. And r is equal to 1. OK, so now we just need to calculate the second total derivative. And we can go ahead and enumerate all of the different ways that we can sum k1, k2, and k3 such that they equal to 2. So we have so I'll just write it as a, a 3 tuple. Uh, k1, k2, k3. So we could have 2, 0, 0. So k1 would be 2 in this case, which would force the others to be 0. Or we could have 0, 2, 0. Or we could have 0, 0, 2. Okay, now if k1 is equal to 1, then we're going to have two different possibilities. Either k2 could be 1 or k3 could be equal to 1. So we have 1, 1, 0. And 1, 0, 1. And then if k1 is equal to 0, 
then we already have the case when k2 and k3 are both 2, or are uh, disjointly 2. So that means that it has to be 1, which would force the other to be 1 as well. So we have six possibilities for k1, k2, and k3. So that means that we're looking at So we'll, we'll start with the 2's, so we have 2 factorial, k1 is 2, fact, two. then we have 2 factorial over 2 factorial times f sub xx times x minus 1 squared, and We have, similarly, we have 2 factorial over 2 factorial times f sub y, y times y squared plus 2 factorial over 2 factorial f sub z, z times z squared. So we have this term, this term, and this term. We just need to enumerate those three. So we have Two factorial over one factorial, one factorial when k1 and k2 are equal to one, and then we have times the partial derivative of f with respect to x and then y times x minus one times y. And similarly, we'll go ahead and evaluate this um, this term since it'll appear in all three of our terms, our last three terms. So we have two factorial, which is two over 1 times 1, which is 2. So we have 2 times f of xz, so if k1 and k3 are equal to 1. And then times x minus 1 z, times z. And then finally we have, again, 2 by evaluating our factorial times f sub yz times times y times z. Okay, so we need to calculate all of our second order mixed uh, partial derivatives of f. So we'll go ahead and do that over here, so we have go ahead and rewrite our gradient vector so we know our first uh, partial derivatives. So we have So we know that our first component is the partial derivative of f with respect to x. Second is the partial derivative of f with respect to y. And the third is the partial derivative of f with respect to z. And we need to calculate So we need to calculate f sub xx, f sub xy, f sub xz, f sub yy, f sub yz, and f sub zz. So for f sub xx, take the partial derivative of our first component with respect to x, and we get 6xy, and we're going to go ahead and evaluate this at the point 100. 
and we get 0. Take the partial derivative, so we're looking at the partial derivative of f sub x with respect to y for our second term. So we have 3x squared. And again, evaluated at 1, 0, 0 is 3. And now we'll take the partial derivative of f sub x with respect to z. There's no z component, so it's 0 at all points. And we'll take f sub y, y. There's no y component in our f sub y, so that's 0 at all points. And similarly, there's no z in our second component, so f sub y, z is also 0. And now we need to take the partial derivative of f sub z with respect to z. So that is two times e to the z squared plus four z squared times e to the z squared. Okay, and we're gonna evaluate that at one zero zero. So z is equal to zero. This first term is two times e to the zero, which is uh, two, which is two, and then multiplied by zero. So our term, our second term is zero. So we have two for f sub z z. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and use this information to calculate. our second total derivative of f at the point 1, 0, 0 with respect to x minus 1, y, and z. So we know that we only have non-zero terms here and here. So we're looking at f sub x, y and f sub z, z. So that's when k is equal to, k1 is equal to 1 and k2 is equal to 1. which is 2, as we know from before, times our partial derivative at the point, which is 3, times x minus 1 times y. And then our other non-zero term is f sub z, z. So that is when k3 is equal to 2, so we have 2 factorial over 2 factorial, which is just 1. And then times our partial derivative, which is 2, and then times z squared. So we have our total derivative when r is equal to 2, so go ahead is equal to 6 times x minus 1 times y plus 2z squared. Okay, so for our, Taylor our second order Taylor polynomial, we needed the total derivative when r is equal to 0, 1, and 2. We calculated those. So now all we need to do is plug them into this formula. So we have So 
So we'll compute the one over r factorial um, quickly just by words. So when r is equal to zero, we have one. When r is equal to one, we have one over one again. And when r is equal to two, we have one over two. So we can just sum the first two and then multiply one half times our third, our third. So we have So we have 1 plus y times, um, that I said it, but then I didn't write it, plus 1 half times 6 times our quantity x minus 1, y plus 2z squared. So we can uh, distribute the 1 half. And we have 1 plus y plus 3 times the quantity x minus 1, y plus z squared. So that's our second order Taylor polynomial. And now we need to calculate our third order Taylor polynomial. So we'll go ahead and do that. And we know that this same formula works. We just need to sum from r equals 0 to 3. And so that means that we just have to append to this equation 1 over 3 factorial, which is 6, times our total derivative, our third total derivative, of f at the point 1, 0, 0. Uh, with respect to x minus 1, y, and z. Okay, so we, all that's left to calculate is the third total derivative. So we know that this is equal to the sum of three tuples, k1, k2, k3, such that k1, k2, and k3 sum to three. So we want, so I'll first just um, write down our different uh, possibilities for k1, k2, and k3. Again, where k1 is the first component, k2 and k3 are the second and third. So we have three, zero, zero. And then if k1 is 2, then either k2 or k3 could be 1, but not both. So we have two more point, two more terms. And then if k1 is 1, then we could either have k2 equal to 2, which would force k3 to be 0, or vice versa. And then also we have the point where k1, k2, and k3 are all 1. Okay, so now if k1 is 0, then that means that we could have k2 as 3, and then k3 would be 0. We also have possibility where k2 is 2, which would force k3 to be 1. And also uh, the possibility where k1 is 0, k2 is 1, which would force k3 to be 2. And then possibility where both k1 and k2 are 0, and k3 is 3. So we have 10 possibilities of different combinations of k1, k2, and k3. 
and we know that Our, total our third total derivative is the sum of these k, k1 through 3 possibilities of 3 factorial over k1 factorial, k2 factorial, k3 factorial. Times the mixed partial derivative of f where we take the partial derivative with respect to x, k1 times, the partial derivative of, with respect to y, k2 times, and the partial derivative of f with respect to z, k3 times. So for example, in the combination 3, 0, 0, we would take the partial derivative of f with respect to x three times, and no times for y or z. And then finally, um, we multiply that by k x minus 1 raised to the power of k1 times y raised to the power of k2 and z raised to the power of k3. Okay, so we're going to need to calculate all of these mixed partial derivatives. So we'll go ahead and do that. Just for the sake of compactness, we can um, kind of write them as the gradient of some of these terms. And it turns out that the easiest way would be to pick xx, yy, and zz. So we'll take the gradient of our function 6xy. And so we know that that's going to be the partial derivative of xx, or of f sub xx, with respect to x, and then y, and then z as our three components. So that will give us f sub xxx, f sub xxy, and f sub xxz. So we see that those three terms are 6y, 6x, and 0. So that corresponds to this first row. Here, so now we're going to take a partial derivative of f sub y y, or take the gradient of f sub y y. Which is zero, so that means that all three of our components are gonna be zero. So that means that anywhere we see uh, two in the cent uh, two in the second component, the gradient is going to be zero. Uh, so we have there and there, and then also when the second component is three, because that'll be f sub y cubed. So we have eliminated three of those terms, and now we'll take the gradient of f sub z z which is two e to the z squared plus four z squared times e to the z squared. And obviously there's no x uh, or y term, so the first two components will be zero. And then we can compute the third component. Okay. 
And our third component is 4z times e to the z squared plus 8z times e to the z squared plus 8z cubed times e to the z squared. There's a z in each of these terms, but at our point 1, 0, 0, 0, 0. So that means that all three of those partial derivatives are 0. Um, so let's figure out which three these correspond to. So we, we have this first row. And we have eliminated those three. And so we've already, so we're starting with f sub z, z. So z has to have a two. So we're looking at those two. So this is the partial derivative. This is our first component, which is zero. This is our second component, which is also zero. And then finally, we have f sub z cubed, which is here. So we've eliminated that term as well. So we have all of our terms eliminated or um, taken care of. So I guess we can also eliminate this term, except for our, our when k1, k2, and k3 are all 1. So we'll just compute that one separately. So we have so we can take the partial derivative of any of the terms with xy, xz, or yz, and take it with respect to the variable that's not included. So the easiest one to choose is f sub yz, since that's 0. We know that f sub xyz is also 0. And you can double check that f of xz is also 0, f of xy with respect to z is also 0. So we can also eliminate this term. Now, I didn't uh, evaluate our first gradient. So that's our f of x cubed, f of x uh, squared y. And when we're at the point 1, 0, 0, our first component is 0. And our second component is 6. And our third component stays 0. So it looks like the only term that remains after, after all of this is when k1 is equal to 2 and k2 is equal to 1. So we've simplified our total derivative. to when k1 is equal to 2. So we have 3 factorial over 2 factorial times 1 factorial times 0 factorial, where 0, zero, zero factorial is 1. And then times our partial derivative. And we know that our partial derivative is given here, evaluated at our point. So it's 6. And then multiply that by x minus 1 squared. And then k2 is also 1, or k2 is 1, so we have multiply that by y. So we see that we have 3 factorial over 2 factorial is 3. And 3 times 6 is 18. So our third total derivative of f of x, y, z at the point 1, 0, 0 with respect to x minus 1, y, z is equal to 18 times the quantity x minus 1 squared times y. So we have 18 times the quantity x minus 1 squared times y. And 
as we can see, we're just adding this term times one sixth to our second order Taylor polynomial. So we have one sixth of eighteen is three. So we have, just erase it so it's a little bit clearer. So we have our, t our third order Taylor polynomial of x, y, z around the point 1, 0, 0 is 1 plus y plus 3 times the quantity x minus 1 times y plus z squared plus 3 times the quantity x minus 1 squared plus y. 